Hi, this is a quick video about how to adapt the Fisher Place uh, Linkamal uh, Penguin. Um, I noticed these toys as I was uh, working with families um, you know, popping up in some homes and uh, thought they were pretty pretty cool. They reminded me a lot of the Fisher Price Beat Bow from a few years ago that is discontinued now, but you can find really inexpensively in thrift stores. Unfortunately, I have adapted him, but I've um, the uh, Beat Bow, but I've never actually figured out how to do it very well. The routine um, that it follows for switch activation is a little bit odd and it tends to be more like changing music tracks than necessarily or timing out, uh, you know, it's really hard to know for, uh, for the child, I guess, to know what is going to happen next and predict it. So uh, it can be a good toy, especially if, a, um, you know, if it's used fairly casually or if there's someone there to help supervise it, that kind of thing to help to show what the routine is. It can be really good. The nice thing about the uh, penguin is his routine is actually perfect. He works on time activation. When you hit the switch, he'll run for a set amount of time and ignore all input from the switch until um, he's timed out. And then it'll listen to the switch again and you can press it to start. So it's a great little toy. Um, I can show you what the activation looks like. Uh, stomach lights up and he has some nice movement as well. So um, I work with uh, lots of children who have cortical visual impairment. And so this is a, a great toy for getting some of that initial um, attention orientation uh, because of the light and that sort of thing. Um, it can be a very attractive toy due to movement and lots of different factors. So um, basically I'm gonna show a really quick little demo of how to um, switch adapt it. So I've already opened this up. Uh, you'll notice there's a couple switches on here. And what we're going to do is uh, today I'm going to show you how to adapt this switch here. Um, but you'll actually be able to do the other one as well if you choose to. Uh, so as I say, I've already got it open. There's actually six screws on the bottom that I'll show you here. Um, you can take these buttons out and just move them to the side. Make sure you don't lose this piece here because that's a little activator that's going to uh, press on the plates here to make sure that it continues to activate once we're finished this adaptation, just as it did out of the store. Uh, so we'll put those aside safely, make sure that the pieces are there with them. Uh, and then on the bottom here, I'm going to show you all I did to get this open is there's six screws around the perimeter, and I've just removed those. So once um, it's open here, um, I'm going to show you a close-up of a couple of well, first I'll show you what's in the in the toy. Uh, this is a, a quarter inch mono mini uh, port and it's actually embedded right in there with a little ring that holds it on on this side that's twisted on. So these are pretty inexpensive to find. Uh, you would call it a quarter inch mini, um, I believe it's a quarter inch mini plug would be the name you would look for I think online to get that. Um, and you can usually buy a few of them if you want to do a few toys pretty inexpensively. When you buy more than one, it's, um, it's usually a little bit easier to find them. Uh, and then, so basically that looks like this here. I'm going to show a version of it that's up close. Um, as well as it has a little ring like this that goes on it. So you can see pretty close. It's basically a mono headphone jack. So. Um, you'll notice that what goes in it is basically a headphone jack. Uh, it has the two sheaths on the top here that connect the circuit together when it's closed. Um, so all we're really doing is we're actually just transferring a couple of the um, solder joints from inside the toy and we're just deferring them up through the port and then out through the little jack here into the switch and the switch closes the circuit. It's doing the same thing as if you were to short circuit between those two solder points right there. So we need a couple of things to do that. Um, we need the actual port here, the quarter inch port, and you're going to actually connect up a couple of pieces of wire to have here. So what you're going to do is take a little bit of wire like this. It could be speaker wire, it could be project wire, um, I like to use wire that's connected together in the center. So you'd snip this off and what you want to do is you can take a pair of pliers or wire cutters and you can just um, clean off the plastic right on the end there. You just strip it until you have a little bit of the metal 
you can twirl it in your fingers to make it a nice neat um, little end. And then what you're going to do is you can actually either twirl that end right around these little holes here, you see at the end, uh, or you can put them on with solder, or you can do both. Uh, you know, probably safe to even do both if, uh, you know, if you like. So uh, the two part parts that we're going to use, we're actually going to take a piece of wire like this, strip both ends, and you're going to actually furl the wire around the outer side here and the upper um, pin on this side. So we're not going to touch the center pin. We're actually just going to connect those together. And so you can see the final here. Let's bring the light a bit closer. You can see how it's connected in just those two places. The center pin is just sort of pushed away. You could even clip it off. It's not really important uh, to keep. It doesn't really do anything. And so you can see what all I've done here is once I've connected my wires to this, I need about enough to just reach down to the feet here. Um, and you can see here, I do a terrible job soldering. I've been soldering for years and I've looked up lots of tutorials and I'm not very good at it. You don't have to be good at soldering to do this. Uh, in fact, it's okay to make mistakes and I'm going to talk about how to uh, work with that a little bit. What you can see here is that um, I have short-circuited between two solder points. So this is the switch. These little lines show where the circuit is going. They go to these little solder joints here. I'm going to show you a clearer picture of what the solder joints look like on the other foot. So this is, this is what the solder joints look like when they're not adapted. The other side only has two solder joints. This side has three, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but I just want you to see what they look like. There's a little gap in between them. So you're trying to take the wires and solder only to, um, or separately, I should say, uh, point to point. So you want the wire to connect to the one point on the right side here. You want the other wire to come down and connect only to the left point on the left side here. And so you can see I've done a little bit of scraping there to make sure that there's no possible way that a connection could be made through these two things. I can tell you that if you're not used to soldering, um, you can look up some tutorials. As I say, I still find it pretty difficult even after doing it for many years, but it's okay because you can actually correct what you do. So because you're heating the solder, it's going to turn into a molten liquid. Um, I actually get something along with, um, I should show both sides probably, but this is just a you know basic soldering iron. You're going to actually heat the points and what you're doing essentially is you are heating up a solder like this. Get a, a non-lead solder, of course, and you're going to come, be careful you don't hold it too close, you'll burn your fingers. I tend to hold it a little bit further away. And I apply heat with the iron over the area that I want to solder. Uh, that's going to make a molten metal, essentially, that's going to harden there. What I learned, um, you know, years after doing this, um, is that you can actually remove solder joints much more easily than I thought. I always thought you had to remelt them in order to change them, essentially. But I actually found a tool that was quite inexpensive. I think it was about $7 Canadian. And um, basically, you push the plunger down. You would heat the solder up with the soldering iron. So you'd put the soldering iron right there and you'd heat it up until it was molten. And then you actually just press this little button on the top here, and it literally, it's called a solder sucker, and it literally sucks the solder right out. You can actually see some pieces there. There's pieces that um, I, I probably did while I was adapting this. So once the area is clean, then you can restart and try again. Um, obviously be cautious, um, look online, follow safety precautions, all those sorts of things, get the non-lead solder. Um, you know, and uh, and do your research and that sort of thing, but it can it can be done, and it's uh, it's not as hard as you know um, people might initially imagine. Um, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else major here to show, other than just to make sure that you leave this area um, alone, because there. Um, I found out after I did the adaptation that some other people have done it, and they've actually soldered right onto the. Um, the switchboard here and covered it, causing it the toy to no longer function normally. 
um, it'll only work through the switch. So this actually maintains the toy and keeps it in good shape if you ever want to hand it down or, um, you know, you might have children uh, who want to activate it using the switch as well in, in the home. And so the other uh, piece to this is that um, because these are independent uh, solder joints, um, these are going to activate, in this case, the music switch. It's up in this foot here. Uh, and if you do this adaptation, you're only adapting that one switch. If you're interested in adapting the other switch, you have to replicate this on the other side. So you'd be buying two of these, you'd get two um, strands of wire, and you'd solder it up on that side, and then you'd actually come over here, and you'd want to put another port in this side here. Uh, so I can tell you a little bit about how I actually made those ports fit as well. I tend to use these ports here. Some people will actually buy a corded uh, wire like this uh, that instead of being the jack is the plug. Sometimes I forget which is which. Um, this is the jack side, this is the plug side, right? So you can actually buy things like this that are, say for example, uh, for extending headphones or something like that. Um, and if you do that, you can cut the wires, if they're just a cheap thing from the dollar store or something, you can cut the wires and splice them into um, a piece that can actually be thread into here and then soldered onto the same joints. Um, I prefer not to go that way, especially with the stereo ones, it can get a little bit more complicated. If you can get a mono one, it's much more easy. Um, but there certainly are, you know, if you look at some resources out there, you'll see ways of, of doing that as well. Um, and the advantage of that is you can make a very small hole to thread it through because you're only trying to fit that little little bit of wire through. The way that I do it, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, these are quarter inch switch ports because they're about a quarter inch in size. The, um, I believe it's the circumference of these is about somewhere around a quarter inch. And so if you actually take, you know, you usually want to do a little bit of a pilot hole. Um, and then usually what I have to do is take about a quarter inch bit and then as, you know, I've actually got through the toy, I'm giving it a bit of a turn just to make the hole a little bit larger because the threads still have to fit through um, or going up maybe one size of drill bit. But experiment and be careful with it. Um, don't go too far because you don't want the ring to slip through that actually holds it in place. Once you put it through the hole, you're going to screw this ring on from the other side. You'll see it here. And you want to screw that on really tight so it can't come off. And uh, if your hole is too large, it could actually pop right through. So what we want to do on the other side here is to replicate the same, uh, same adaptation, uh, except that when it comes to the solder joints, you usually are going to, as far as I know anyways, I've experimented a little bit with it. It seems like if you use the center solder point and select either one of the outside to use, then it seems to work fine. Uh, and so, you know, my, my recommendation though probably would be to use this outside one here, just looking at what the circuit does. You can see one joint goes directly to the switch here. The other one seems to circle back and come to here. I can't tell you exactly what the electronics are that necessitate another thing here. It could be to do with, you know, behavior, or it could be to do with uh, battery power or something. I don't really know. But it doesn't really matter. The point is that it's perfectly safe to connect those together because you can see there's there's actually a um, path that's created for us already. So I would recommend the center plus the right one there and again all you're going to do here's another example of some wire with um, the ends. This one's really old and tattered but you can see what I mean here. If you were to restrip some wire like that uh, make it nice and tidy just like um, this one here, you furl it up in your fingers like we talked about, spin it around, make it nice and neat and clean, and all you're going to do is come around and you're going to solder that onto the center and you're going to solder one onto the other side. So one, one strand each, right? One to the center, the other one to uh, the outside on the right there. And that will activate your other switch, which I think in this toy is, uh, it looks like it's about shapes and um, numbers. So you don't have to adapt both, obviously. 
Um, but if you'd like for completeness to have both options or some variety, it just means that when you plugged into this side, you would get the, um, the music side. If you plugged into the other side, you would get the shapes and numbers. One last consideration is just that um, I had to be really careful because of the type of ports that I used that um, they take up space inside. Sorry, I'm just going to bring a light closer here so I can show you. Um, they take up some room inside of the toy and you'll notice that there's actually some things down here too. So I had to go through and sort of really match these up and try to transpose in my head where is there going to be enough space for um, that jack to fit in once it's closed up uh, because the two pieces are going to come together quite closely so it actually is high enough up that it sort of flies over these here I think it fits sort of right right about here and that seems to work well it doesn't conflict with anything um, and the wires lead you know really easily to the spot that they need to go once it's closed up I'm not really worried about it pulling or having other issues like that remember that we're because we're screwing it shut even though it moves a lot. There isn't really a lot of strain on the inside. Um, and so that's really, that's really it. I would say you put your um, pieces back in here with um, the buttons back in. Uh, both of those like that. And I'm going to do it right now one handed because I'm holding the phone. But basically you put your buttons back in, you put it, um, the feet back on. Uh, you screw it all together and you test it. I would suggest you test all the way through the process. So try short circuiting it every possible place that you're actually trying to connect. So take a take a screw as you you know before you solder and make sure you know that okay that turn the toy on. Make sure you know that really is going to happen if you short circuit those two. Does it make the toy start? Mine's not turned on right now, so you won't see that effect. But if it's turned on, it will. Uh, you can short circuit it up here. You can put those two uh, wires together prior to um, actually putting them on. We'll, we'll get that later. Um, and uh, so you could take them just like I did here. You could take these two wires and just touch them together once they've been soldered on here. And you know that, oh, okay, hey, everything's okay up until that point. Then you put this piece on. And then, as I say, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I showed this in the video yet, but this is something that I made a long time ago is why it's all tattered um, and basically this is just a little uh, cheat that I made so that if you don't have a switch handy you can actually plug this um, into the back here and it it will do the same thing uh, as activating the switch so if I turn on the bottom here and just wait for this little opening routine to start you'll see that if I touch them together that's all the switch is doing, right? It's closing. It's closing the circuit. All right, just turn off. All right, and so that's it. Um, you know, as I say, make sure you double check that those pieces are still in the bottom, so that it activates properly here. Make sure you don't get solder on those those pieces. Uh, close it up. Make sure that when you press, it still works. Um, I haven't had any issues with it impeding the switch or anything like that yet, but I suppose it could probably happen. Um, you know, it, you basically just want to kind of check things as you go. What can be frustrating is when you um, adapt something and you go too far without checking and then you go back and you realize, oh, I'm not actually sure what joint is making, you know, um, is causing an issue right now or where you get the whole thing closed up and then you have to open it right back up again. So test it when it's open and, you know, um, at least then you kind of know, you know, uh, at what stage you should actually call it quits and, and close it up. So, all right, and so that's adapting the um, Fisher-Price Linkamo, uh, the penguin, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Appreciate it.